Welcome to Animal Adventure Camp. I'm Shannon Coiner. You can just call me Shannon. I have been training dogs since I was a teenager. So just a little bit older than you, I started really training dogs. And I went to school to be, I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian. I went to college, but then I realized I didn't really want to be a veterinarian. And I met a veterinary technician, which is a veterinary nurse. So then after I got my degree in biology, I went and became a veterinary nurse. So I had to get another two year degree after that. So then I became a veterinary nurse, but I always loved training animals. So once I became a nurse, I also started doing animal training and learning all about behavior. So you know how sometimes um, people have problems or they have things going on and they have to go to a therapist? Have you guys ever heard of a therapist before? Where people go to talk about their problems or if, if they're having a hard time getting organized, they get somebody to help them? Well, that's what I do now with dogs too, is so dogs that are fearful or aggressive or shy, I help them privately, but I also teach agility and puppy class and teach things like kids camp. So part of the reason I did kids camp is because my world of animals and my careers, I've worked in zoos, I've worked in vet offices, I've done research, um, and so I've done a lot of different things. And I have friends who do fish and game and grooming, and I've worked in zoos. So I wanted a way to teach kids about different careers that they have in, with animals. So that's a little bit about me. And then what we're going to be doing in kids camp, uh, um, for Animal Kids Camp, is we will, every morning, you'll come in, you can come over and you know pet the bunnies and say hi to the bunnies, and we will have talk about a career or something that's animal related. So like this morning, we're gonna talk about body language, we're gonna talk about understanding dogs, and then we're gonna also talk about what it's like to be a trainer, because when you're training, you have to be able to train animals to do different things to help people. So we're going to have information about all of that. Then um, tomorrow we talk about veterinary medicine, so you're gonna get to do some veterinary medicine stuff. And then we have um, the groomer, and she also does farming. That's from Aloha Grooming. She's the one who donates the animals for us to play with for kids camp, is Aloha Grooming. And then um, another friend let me borrow her rats. So we have those from those places. On Wednesday, we'll do the grooming. And then on Thursday, Fish and Game, Fish and Wildlife comes. So you'll get a chance to see what it's like to work with Fish and Wildlife. So that's what we'll do every morning. We're going to have activities and we're going to learn things. Then we'll take a small break where you can eat your snacks, go to the bathroom if you need to, or any of those things. And then in the, after, the second half of camp, you will get, all get an animal to train. And you're, we're gonna, you're going to get to teach an animal a trick. Then on the last day, on Friday, you'll see when you get through, and you'll have to get them out now, but in your purple binder that you'll have in there, you have a yellow piece of paper in here and it talks about show and tell. On Friday, we invite your parents to come in at 11 o'clock and watch everything you've trained. So Cole is my son. He is my assistant this week. And what he's gonna do is if you guys are good listeners or you ask a really good question or you do something really good, he's gonna be giving stickers out. And on the last day, whoever has the most stickers will win a prize. So um, you wanna be a good listener so that you can um, definitely win your prize. So what we're gonna talk about first is, do dogs talk? If they're feeling sad, do they say, I'm feeling sad today? No. If they're feeling scared, do they say with words, I'm scared? If they're happy, do they say with words, I'm so happy today? No. Do you guys know how dogs talk? How they communicate with us or how they try to express their feelings to other animals or other dogs? Any guesses? What do you think, Natasha? Oh, body language and behavior. You're, you learn how to use your environment well, young lady. So yes, body language. So have you ever, a lot of times people know when the dog's tail is tucked. Um, do you know what the tail tucked means? Scared. They're scared, usually people know that. What about tail wagging? What do you think tail wagging means? Uh, Mason. That's what everybody thinks. But did you know that tail wagging doesn't always mean happy. 
Tail wagging just means they have, they're, they're, they're worked up for some reason. They could be excited, they could be nervous, they could be a little bit scared. It just means they're aroused. So sometimes dogs actually bite people when their tails are wagging. And so we um, have to be able to look at other things like their ears and their mouth and stuff. You have a couple handouts about body language. So this one talks about dog body language. This one talks about cat body language. And then we got them another body language one. And we even have a body language handout about rats. Because animals don't use their words. They have to use their bodies. And if we don't understand, you know when people oftentimes why they get bit? It's because the dogs are telling them, I'm scared and they're not listening. So that's why we have to understand body language. Look at your dog body language poster. Um, look at this golden retriever puppy. And do you see the little girl there? Does she have a relaxed face? Does the dog, do you think that puppy has a relaxed face? Yeah. Now look down at the bottom left and there's a lady that's in a dentist chair. Does she look pretty terrified in that dentist chair? Now look at the dog next to her. Doesn't his facial features kind of look like hers? Isn't that kind of crazy? Now look over here where there's a little girl hugging a dog and there's a man trying to kiss a lady on the cheek. Do you, see, do you think that lady wants to get kissed on the cheek? No. Do you think that that dog wants to be hugged? No. See, they don't want it. Now if you look down at the bottom, you will see that there's some things that dogs do when they're nervous or anxious that maybe we don't do. They might yawn, they sniff the ground, exhale a lot, they might scratch extra, or they lick their lips, or they shake their body like they're wet, or they do this thing called whale eye. Can you see what whale eye is? Does anybody understand what whale eye is? That's right, where you can see the whites of your eyes. So when I go like this and I'm looking, so if you're over here but I want to keep a look at you, this side of my eye is white. So if I'm looking at something scary there, you can see all the white and it kind of looks like a whale eye or a half of a moon. So let's look at some of these other pictures too. So you guys have those handouts. Look at this top one. You know, that, these are all really happy puppies, right? The puppy with the ears flopping, no problem, no worries in the world. The puppy that's on their back like that, puppies don't lay on their backs if they're not comfortable because that would be too scary, right? Someone could hurt them if they were nervous. If, they were hurt, if you were worried about being hurt by somebody, would you lay on your back and like lay on the ground and just be silly? If you were afraid of somebody, you might kind of do this, right? So we do body language too to express our feelings. So really see, if you see a dog looking like that, they're probably a really relaxed, happy dog. Now here's some signs of them being a little bit anxious. So you can see they do this little lick lip where they go like this. But they haven't been eating or drinking. So that can be signs, they sniffing, the yawning. See this dog um, that's got its ears pinned back? That's one of the first signs that we see a lot when animals are a little bit nervous. So their ears go way back. So if you see a dog whose ears are way back, or your cat too, so if you're petting your cat and the ears pin back really tight, you might want to back off a little bit. They might not be liking what you're doing. And they're trying to say, please stop. You also see the cowering dogs down at the bottom. Then they, if they shake their whole body, sometimes that's a way of releasing stress. You've got another whale eye there and a little kidney bean. So you can um, start watching these things. Sometimes when dogs are scared too, they won't eat food. They become hypervigilant. Does anybody know what hypervigilant is? You're really looking around, you don't feel safe. They might pant even though it's like if it's cool outside and they're panting or they pace or they cower. Another thing is animals will do sometimes. So if you met a dog in the, on the street and you asked if you could pet him, and you went up to the dog to pet him and the dog went like this. Do you think that dog wants to be pet? Probably not. Just like sometimes you don't like it if people touch your head or get in your face. Dogs don't always like it. Obviously if we see a dog shaking we kind of know they're nervous. Um, and they can be really distracted when they get really nervous. And then when they get really scared, they go into fight, flight, and freeze. And that's where they might start to growl at you. If, if you're not listening to them, they might growl and say, no, stop, I don't like it. Sometimes they'll pull to get away from scary things, or they'll freeze. 
Sometimes I have people who have their dogs, they stop and they can't take them on walks because they won't cross the street because they're too scared. So that happens too. So it's just like people yell at each other, run away from each other or freeze, but they don't have a chance of being, we don't know, get it, let, let them be comfortable. So here you can see those pictures we already talked about. Um, see those two dogs? They don't really want to be held. So if you ever are petting a dog or loving on a dog and you start to notice they're doing this, you might want to listen to them and respect that they don't want to um, be part of that anymore. All right. So there's no, not, um, I think there might be sound at the very end, but there's no, so look at these pictures. See, is that a relaxed dog? See how his face looks, he's happy. Look at all these relaxed dog faces. It's really important that you understand this, especially when you start training a dog, because you want them looking like this when you're training them. You want them to be happy and relaxed. You don't, see how this dog's, look at those dog's eyes and the ears, how they're really pinned back. Look at those, that worried face. See all those worried eyes and those ears are back and their face is really tight. Can you guys see who's worried on this one? Yep, do you see the black lab on the left? Here's some other stress signs, but they're only the ones that you see um, in dogs. And they're just trying to tell you, I'm not, I'm not hurt, I don't wanna do this, I'm not hurting you. They sometimes are a way to try to calm a situation down. So sometimes they'll raise a paw, and that's trying to say, I'm no threat, or they'll yawn, or they do that half moon or the whale eye. They lick their nose. So then if you look and see this, their, um, the relaxed dog, this dog's kind of looking off. This one's relaxed, his ears are up. Look how relaxed its mouth looks. This one you can tell is relaxed. Look how silly that dog's sleeping like a frog. This one's nervous. Look at the tail tuck, the ears. See how they look like they're almost like squishing up into a ball? Just like we kind of squish up in a ball if we're scared. They might bark at you, they might hide if they're scared, just like us. How many of you have hid behind your mom or dad? When they're nervous, they're more likely to bite. Can you guys see this nervous dog right there with the ears back? It's lifting its paw, its mouth is kind of tight. Do you think that one might be alert or aroused? See how they're real confident. Sometimes those can be problems too because they, if you don't listen to them, if they are feeling threats. So if you see a dog doing that, do you think you should pet them? If you see if they look like they're a little bit nervous? Here, here's some dogs meeting. You'll get to watch this. Get to see what dogs look like when they meet a little bit. It's not a super great picture, but you see the stiff tail that the black law, did you catch that? They didn't know if they were gonna be friends or not. They're sort of talking, saying, Okay, do you want to play or do you not want to play? I'm not sure. What do you think? Do you think we should play? And then they're thinking about it. Now they're sniffing. Now look at their tails start to get a little more relaxed, but then that black one gets tight again. They're trying to decide, are we going to be friends or not? Are we going to be friends? No, I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to play with you. No, thank you. That would be like you meeting somebody at a playground. Now look at this tail, look at these tails. You can see how wiggly and waggly they are. And then those dogs said, yep, I'll be your friend. Can you tell which dog wants to play and which one doesn't? This one, the black one might want to play, but the other one's not sure, right? Yeah. Now here's where it gets dangerous. This is why it's important to know about body language. See if their teeth are showing and they're half of that dog. If you pet that dog, you'd probably bite, oops. So now you got startled. Everybody wake up. Did you get to see it or were you too startled to see it? Did you guys see it? Okay.
<laughs> I remembered, I just didn't know that was that loud. Sorry about that. Here's another one. Watch this. See that hand is trying to touch that bone? Do you think that that's a good idea? No. That's not a good idea, right? That dog is saying, do not do that, do not do that, do not do that. Um, and so there, if that person continued, they probably would have been bitten. So it's really important that you watch these things and you be, and, and then if you understand it, now you can teach your friends. So if you're at a park with your friends and your friends say, oh, I want to play with that dog, you might say, look at those ears, look at that tail. I don't think that dog wants to be pet. So I want you to be really aware of what animals look like, what they do, and how they behave. Have any of you ever seen any of those signs in your dogs at home? What sign have you seen, Kai? Happy or nervous? My dog Coco has a bone. I sometimes try to pet her, but she thinks I'm stupid, so she growls at me. She knows keep on trying to pet her, she'll bite me. Okay, so now you can start watching her body language that she's trying to tell you, I don't want that, right? That's right. What about you, Liam? Um, my dog at home, whenever there's like a, it's tiny, my dog is like this tall. Uh-huh. So when there's a dog that's like this big, uh -huh. um, he puts his teeth out like Oh yeah, because he, he's scared, so he tells that dog, leave me alone just to protect himself, probably. And what about you, Chanel? He's always a little nervous. You know, a lot of dogs are really nervous. Yeah, and then they get excited when they're comfortable. Um, have any of you guys trained a dog before? You've trained one? Did you use treats, or what did you use? To t I didn't use treats, I treats Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Today you're going to be doing clicker training with these animals. So we have to start learning about what clicker training is, right? So training has lots of different things. But one of the things that you guys are going to learn, and we're going to do a game in just a minute, is a clicker training game. So everybody can get out your clickers out of your bags. When, if you were working with an animal, you would say maybe sit, and you'd get them to sit, and you'd click and you would treat. So you're going to say sit, and then when they sit, you're going to click, and then you're going to treat. That's how the clicker works. You always do a click and then a treat. So there's a separation. And we're going to um, practice this a little bit more later, too. But we're going to do a game where you're going to clicker train one of you. Um, someone's going to be a volunteer to be a dog or, and get clicker trained, and the rest of you are going to clicker train that person. So. Um, does, does anybody want, who wants to be, um, do the, be the volunteer? Uh, let's have Kai be the volunteer for this one. Okay, but just a minute, stay seating for just a minute. So what we're going to do is in a second, Kai's going to go outside and we're going to decide what we're going to train him to do, okay? Then he's going to come in and we're going to be reinforcing him for what we do. Now, because for the sake of time, we're not going to be giving a Kai a treat every time. So Kai, every time you hear this, it means you're doing the right thing. And if you don't hear anything, it means that you're not on the right track. You, do you know how to play the game hot and cold? You know, where you get hotter, 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 or colder, colder, colder? Um, so when you hear the click, it's like I'm saying you're getting hotter. Um, when you don't hear a click, it's like I'm saying colder. So you will need to change your direction a little bit, okay? So you're going to get to see what it feels like to be clicker trained, and then they're going to see what it's like to do the clicker training, okay? So that's what we're going to do um, in here. So um, Cole, can you take Kai and just have him sit outside with you for a minute? So we need to have him do something. So when he comes back in here, we do something. A lot of times what I do is have that person come in because he has no idea, you know, what we're doing. So a lot of times I'll have them come in and like touch something, you know, pick up something, uh, maybe, maybe even step on something. I do have an extra tarp here if we want 
to put this like right here because he won't be paying any attention and we could get him to step on this. Something kind of simple. For simple sake, what I'm gonna do is let's see if we can get him to step on this. Because when you're first learning and teaching an animal to use a clicker, we have to keep it simple because they don't know what the clicker means yet. Okay, so what you need to do is as soon as he comes through this gate, you're going to click as he's walking this way, right? Because that's the right direction, because we want him to come over here. Now, if he starts walking this way, stop clicking. If he starts walking this way, click again. If he walks past this, stop clicking. If he turns back, click again. I'll be helping you, so don't worry, okay? You can walk around, but we have a task that we have already in our heads decided what you're going to do, okay? So what you need to do is listen, and every time we do this, it means you're in the right direction. But if you don't hear us do anything, you might want to stop your body and change directions or do something different, okay? And I'll help you some because this is all. Um, no, just stand, just walk like a human because we have a human task for you. All right, so everybody ready with your clickers? Okay, ready? You can go, Kai, start walking. Well, he's frozen, so do we want, we don't, we only want to click once. There, he, yep, you did it. Good job, you, that was easy. I just walked in. <laughs> uh, that's, and what you guys just experienced <laughs> is what some dogs do. If you put something new in the environment, my dog, if you put something new in the environment, he comes over, first thing he does is an it like, and he'll kick it with his paws and he'll touch it with his nose and then I get him to interact with it. See, we wanted it something simple. Did you guys see the difference? So when he stopped and you kept clicking, then it was like he thought he was still doing the right thing, right? So he was just gonna stand there. If you kept clicking while he was standing there, he would've get clicked, but you did a great job by it's continuing it. I know, that worked, that's why we did it. So it was super simple. Nice job. So are you gonna do it again? Now we're gonna do it again with somebody else. So somebody else gets to, so you can try clicking. Otherwise you don't get a clicking turn. All right, who wants to be, all right. So Mason, you wanna be the volunteer this time? Okay. It might be a little harder. So why don't we just do this? He knows that I talked about putting your hand on your nose. How about we have him put a hand, one or two hands on his head? How about that? One hand. Well, and if he does two, then we'll give it to him too, but because but, we want to be a little loose at the beginning. He can come up this way. It doesn't matter. We'll just let him. Okay, so now he's up here. So we, now we have to just let him do some other stuff. So experiment with different movements and it doesn't really matter now where he stands. So we don't have to. Okay, so you're not hearing any clicks. So where did you hear clicks last? So we'll let him stay right in there. We'll choose that as our spot because we didn't talk about that. So we'll choose that as our spot. Okay, only one click because then he gets confused and he'll think he's found, he got the answer. Only one click. No clicking. Because we want him that way, right? Because we want him to know this is closer. It's Good. Well, if he's not moving and he doesn't change his behavior, don't keep clicking or he'll think he's supposed to freeze like this. Okay, now hold. So he keeps trying new things. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, where did you get the most clicks again? Okay, you're doing good. Only one click at a time. You shouldn't do fast, fast clicks. You're on the right track. You're doing a really good job. Your arms are going to get tired. <laughs> You're close. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Good job! Very, very good. Okay, that's enough clicking. Very good. Now you see how much harder that one was than one when you just put something really obvious to make it stand. But you did such a good job, did you? And you guys did a good job of clicking. So then he started realizing, okay, it's my arms are something up here because every time you put them down, and that's where when you click, it's really important that you get the right timing because occasionally someone would do a rogue click, you know, down here, and then he'd go, wait. I thought this was, you know, that makes it confusing if you make a mistake. But if you make a mistake with the clicker, it's not that big of a deal. It confuses the learner a little bit. But if you used punishment, please no clicking. If you used punishment like we used to use with choke chains and pinch collars, and you accidentally popped a dog when they did the right thing, that would be pretty sad, right? What if you got an A or got a really good grade on a test and somebody thought that it was a, wasn't a good grade and they were like, well, you should have done better than that, you would feel bad, right? Even because you were like, I did my best and people weren't happy. But if somebody, if you got a really bad grade and somebody was like, oh, it's okay, you're going to be more boosted to do something better, try more, you know, because sometimes if we always are told no and dogs get punished a lot, then they don't want to learn anymore because it's not very fun. But you did a great job at keeping your arms up and really paying attention to the clicks. So if you're first time teaching your animal something and you want them to do a backflip, but they've never learned anything before, do you think that's going to be the easiest thing for them to learn? And do you think they're going to get really frustrated if, you, if they don't understand? So starting with something really easy like sit down, come, stay, those kinds of things, will all help you. You're gonna get to see this lady. She trained these dogs to dance with her. She did not start with this. She started with sit and down and come and stay and really basic training, okay? When you ask a dog or somebody to do something, it's called a cue, right? You say sit, and what do you expect them to do? Sit. sit. And if you say down, what do you expect them to do? Sit. Lay down, right? Lay on the stomach. And if you put your hand out and you say shake, you expect them to shake, right? Those are called cues. Those are asking the dog's behaviors to do. Sometimes people used to call them commands, but now we're starting to call them cues because it's cueing the behavior to happen. So it's saying, you know, I'd like you to sit. I'd like you to down. I'd like you to spin. Whenever you use those words, those are words that you've trained, right? You're going to watch this lady dance with her dogs. I want you to, we're going to watch it the first time, but what I want you to do is watch her hands and what she does with her body and see if you can see what some of the cues are that she does.
All right. So, did you guys see any patterns of anything? Yes. Her, her hands kind of show like what the bodies of the dog would do. Yeah. So she was doing things like when she did this, they jumped. When she did this, they went through her legs, right? So those were all things. She had to teach all those things separate, and then she puts them in this whole dance. And that's all stuff that you can do with the clicker and with all of those kinds of trainings. When you are training, the first thing you're gonna do is train a behavior. So we trained um, Mason to put his hand on his head, right? So once we got him to putting his hand on his head regularly, like he understood it, we could put a cue to it that said, you know, um, you know, pat or something like that. We could say, pat your head, and he would pat his head, and we'd put a word to it. When we teach our animals like this, we're teaching them English as a second language almost. So it helps us communicate with them. Today's first goal is to find out what your animal likes to eat. Because if they don't like your treats, they're not going to want to train for you. Cole's going to help you get um, treats. You and your teammate are going to choose, think of four kinds of treats you want to try. The cheese is only for the rats, so, um, and the peanut butter is only for the rats. The bunnies and the guinea pigs can all have any of the fruits and vegetables, okay? You're going to get your animal. You're going to figure out what food they really like and you're gonna play with them a little bit. And you're gonna see what are some behaviors you might be able to teach them. The most common thing is what you might do is called luring. So if you were luring, we'll just pretend I have a piece of treat. A luring is where like I would have them follow. Like if I was doing the tunnel, I'd lure them through the tunnel. So they follow the treat and then they go through the tunnel. And then when they got through the tunnel, I would click and treat. So that would be luring. Now say your rat or your rabbit, some of them do this and it's really cute, automatic. You know, the bunnies will go like this. Well, if you want to capture that behavior and put it on cue, you would capture it so every time they did this, you click and give them a treat whenever they did it all by themselves. And that's called capturing because it's like you capture them doing it. You catch them doing it and you treat them for it. To work with them. <laughs> uh, last year they were able to make it so that if they pulled it around he would follow with his head inside. Really? Yeah, what if he likes oranges the most? There you go. Good job. That was a good time to click there. Good job. come out of their cage there and go, come on, teach me 20 things, let's go, let's go. No. Exactly. First you have to develop a little bit of a bond, right? So what you did today was build trust. And all of you, uh, part of the reason I was moving and I was watching, is some of you that are animals took the treats right away or pretty easily because they were a little more relaxed, but maybe they weren't able to learn yet, but they were able to take treats. Tomorrow they'll be better. Even though, like, you girls had the rat that didn't take any treats, but he really wanted to be with you and he was engaging with you, he was getting comfortable with you. And so that is all part of learning. Mm -hmm.